Hi, I am Jennifer Purcell, and welcome to my podcast, Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge, where we will discuss, discover, and learn more about the challenges and triumphs of those with NLD and other learning challenges. I do have a website for this podcast, and it is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter account for the podcast. They are all under the same name, which is Living with NLD. I also have a YouTube channel for the podcast, which can be found by Googling the title of the podcast, which is Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge. I would like to tell you about a nonprofit that I use for my research for this podcast. It is called The NBLD Project, and I use their blog for my research. They are a nonprofit that is based in New York and is trying to get NVLD back on the DSM, and they provide many resources for people with NVLD on their website. I'll provide you with the website for them in the podcast description. All proceeds from the ads on this podcast will be donated towards the NVLD project. Please feel free to explore the other topics on the podcast, and hopefully you will learn something new from them. I hope you enjoy today's episodes. Also, another announcement that I have to make is I recently created another podcast called Sleepy Butterfly for people who have challenges with sleeping at night or meditating, and it's geared towards people who are auditorily sensitive or and or have chronic migraines and being able to have nice, relaxing nature sounds for them to fall asleep to or to meditate to and be able to be refreshed the next day or when they come out of their meditation. Um, So some of the sounds are like chimes or nature sounds like water or um, rainforest. And again, it's called Sleepy Butterfly. It is on Spotify and also Apple Podcast and Google Podcast. And it's on everywhere else where you can get podcasts as well. So I hope you are able to get some benefits out of that one also. So the next small uh, support group chat for NLDers or people who have learning disabilities will be in July. I haven't done one for a while because I've been busy. Sorry about that. Um, But it will be July 16th, which is third Saturday. I will definitely do that one because I want to uh, meet with you guys who haven't seen in a while or talked with a while. I miss you guys. And um, I want to see how you're doing and be able to support you if you have anything that you need to bring up and have support around. Um, So again, that's on the 16th of July from 10 Pacific time zone to 1130 Pacific time zone. And that's in the morning, of course. Um, And it's just a safe space for you to share about anything that, excuse me, might be on your mind or might be troubling you. And nothing goes outside the group unless permission is asked about that and granted from that person who shared it. And today I am very excited to announce that BetterHelp is now sponsoring this podcast. I have had seven years of therapy, so I know it can help change your life if you not only let it, but work on the personal goals that you set with your therapist. Without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is therapy works. But what is therapy exactly? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships at work, not dealing well with stress. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you to help. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, 
phone and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's more affordable than in-person therapy and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are the greatest asset. And special offering to listeners of Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge, you can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash I'll put in the link in the podcast description for you. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-E-P. Thanks again to BetterHelp for supporting, I mean, sponsoring this podcast. I also want to mention to you that I just launched my podcast swag on Wednesday of this week and have a page for it on my website and I will also send you the link to it in the podcast description and I will also send it to you in the newsletter that I usually send on out on Fridays. I am now selling t-shirts, water bottles, and a backpack and they all have the podcast logo and title on it and the tagline. So I am looking forward to watching the sales and seeing who buys them and um, spreading the word more about my podcast. Good morning and happy Friday, or maybe it's <laughs> afternoon or Saturday, depending on where you're listening from. So. Today is, drumroll, two years of doing this podcast, and just like I did when it was one year, I am going to give you some stats that show how the podcast has grown since I started it, and again, this is not me bragging about the podcast. It is uh, just me showing how proud I am of how much it's grown over two years and being able to celebrate with you, my audience, about um, it and its growth. So here we go. When I started the podcast, it had just six plays for my first episode on July 17th of 2020. Then when I started the website for the podcast in September of 2020, it got eight views from the United States. And I started social media accounts for it in that month too. And it had 16 followers on both platforms. And also... It uh, went international on August 19th of 2020 with Canada joining the audience. And within one week of the podcast being on Spotify, it had 39 plays and nine listeners. In November of last year, which is 2020, I know it's 2022 now, so in November of 2020, it got 1,000 plays. And in January of 2020, I created a podcast channel. Uh, sorry, in January 2021, I created a podcast channel for it on YouTube. And it got 13 subscribers on it. And one year later, I'm at 3,176 plays on Spotify, and most plays in one day was 65, and with 146 listeners, and 58 followers on Spotify, 119 likes, and 131 followers on Facebook, 86 followers on Instagram, and on YouTube channel, 22 followers, I mean subscribers, 
and 496 views of the episodes and 18 likes. And on the newsletter, we have 45 people. And um, have 45 states, 41 countries, and 490 cities counted worldwide. A total of 171 downloads across all episodes. Sorry, 1,171 downloads. Said that incorrectly. And 1,812 website views. And I've done 52 episodes with 974 views on the website. That was for year one. I've done 17 interviews and 36 episodes. I also have about 10 people on the Facebook chats at, that were on Zoom in the beginning. And now, two years later, let me take a little water break. I have 6,921 plays on Spotify, most plays in one day, 91, and 3,550 downloads in total, and I have, and I'm going to give you the top 10 episodes from the website that had the most number of views. I mean, sorry, from Anchor first and then the website. So from Anchor, it is So we'll start with the hot the episode views from Anchor, or which are uh, the top ten, beginning with episode one about strength and differences of NLD. It has two hundred eighty five views, and then we go to episode ten, has inter which is an interview with Lauren about strengths and differences of NLD again, one hundred eighty six views. And then episode nine is number is in third place with about NLD and sports with 177 views. Fourth place, episode six, dating and quirks of NLD with 169 views. Fifth place, episode 36, myths and facts about NLD has 155 views. Sixth place, episode three, commonality of NLD, how to diagnose NLD, and symptoms of NLD, has 148 views. Excuse me. Episode 8, multitasking with NLD, has 131 views. Episode 4, issues with social situations because of NLD, has 111 views. And episode 9, I mean, sorry, episode 3, mental math and NLD has 111 views. And last but not least, episode 37, what is, in quotes, normal for NBLDers has 101 views. And again, those were the top 10 episodes on Anchor. And Spotify has 1,544 uh, plays and actually has over 2,000. Um, and it has 309 listeners and 86 followers. Google Podcast has 237 plays, 3.85 thousand minutes played. 
30 subscribers. Facebook has 222 likes and 1,000 followers. Yay! Instagram has 532 followers. Twitter has 69 followers. YouTube channel has 33 subscribers, 1,512 views of episodes, and 83.5 hours watched, and still got 45 people in the newsletter. And with the world reach from the website and anchor, we have 50 states, 61 countries. 3,929 website views and 748 cities counted and 510 that are um, unknown on the website, which probably means that um, they know the country that it's in, but they don't know the city in that country that it's in, which is a little weird. Um, and Next, I will give you the top 10 episodes from the website views. So, the top 10 episodes from the website are episode 23, Auditory Memory, has 98 views. Episode 20, which is the one about my personal past and meaning of my pen name has 72 views and episode 49 about driving lessons has 70 views. Episode 17 about managing money has 69 views. Episode 27 about chronic pain and NLD has 65 views. Uh, episode 26 being made fun of with NLD has 47 views. Episode one, Strength and Differences of NLD has 45 views. Episode 11, Driving with NLD has 44 views. Episode 52, about taking care of yourself and posing for pictures with NLD has 44 views. And episode nine from year two, The Effects of Ghosting for NBLDers and Neurotypicals has 43 views. And... In one year, or sorry, in two years, I have done 104 episodes in total. And I would say, trying to approximate how many interviews I've done. Um, I have done, actually, this is easy to do from my YouTube channel because I keep it separate by interviews and solo episodes. So I have done 36 interviews in two years, which is a good amount, I would say. And I have done... Seventy solo interviews in two years. I mean, seventy ep solo episodes in two years. Um, so, I want to take a moment though to thank everybody who uh, made this podcast possible and made it who helped me make what it is today. And those would be first and foremost people from my family, like my brother and my mom and my dad and my grandma and my dog truffles they all have cheered me on it, and my friends natalie and christian have cheered me on in and jeff being able to um you know create this um podcast that I didn't know in the beginning would be so helpful to people with NLD and to neurotypicals as well. And um, it's been really wonderful to watch it grow over this, these past two years and being able to um, see something that I created and have put a lot of work into uh, benefit others 
and benefit me as well. Um, I'm not the same person I was when I started this podcast. And I'm thankful for that. And being able to um, now want to turn the podcast into a book. Uh, I'm just starting on that project. It's going to take a while because there's a lot of episodes to uh, transcribe. But it will be kind of like a memoir almost because the per- episodes are very personal to me and to others. And um, they will include the interview, some of the interviews from the podcast. Um, and it will be another form of the podcast for you to have access to. And it will, um, it will probably be published later on in my life as a memoir because I think it'd be kind of cool to see the culmination of all the uh, episode topics I've done. Um, so, you know, maybe, or maybe I'll do it in stages of uh, publications because it would be a lot of episodes or chapters to try to fit in one book. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I'm still working on it and trying to uh, tweak and figure out what exactly um, I want to do with the book. Um, but that's an exciting project for me. And I thought I'd share that with you guys. So on to today's topic, which is about... Um, oh, wait a second. I forgot to thank the NBLD project for their help with the podcast. Um, I'm an ambassador for them and they help have helped promote my podcast, which I really appreciate. Um, a lot of the blogs I write for them have been from podcast scripts. So, um, that's pretty cool that they've helped me promote it. And, um, no, I appreciate that. So, Today's topic is about the invisibility and visibility of NLP. So have you ever felt like you're, are invisible, felt not completely understood by others or dismissed by others because they don't get what your learning disability means to you or how it has affected your life? And I want to add to that part that it doesn't have to be learning disability. It could be maybe you're anxious and, excuse me, anxiety affects your life a lot. Or you have chronic migraines like I do sometimes and those affect your life a lot. Um, or you have chronic pain in some other way from joints or um, your back or whatever. Um or you have OCD, or you um, have a learning, dis- a learning challenge like NLD or ADHD or ASD, you know, or Asperger's. I want to be all inclusive of neurotypicals and neurodivergence here because we do both have um, personal things that we deal with that can sometimes make us feel invisible because it's not very obvious on the outside to people when they see us, but on the inside for us, it is obvious and visible. And we usually have to live with that thing or challenge every day in some way, shape or form or another. So for me personally, I felt invisible because of having NLD, being sexually abused and having chronic migraine condition. I have felt this because I don't have anyone that I can talk to in my family about my challenges. Not saying that nobody in my family is supportive with me. I have a very supportive family, but I don't have anybody that I know in person who has the same challenges I do as in terms of being neurodivergent and having migraines and having been sexually abused. I do know people through the podcast virtually um, through email or through social media that have had some of those challenges. Um, And that is a good support platform for me, but it's not the same as having a personal connection in person with somebody like that. Um, 
doesn't feel quite the same. Um, not saying that to be hurtful, I'm just saying that to be true and um, state of fact. Um, so, um, in previous episodes, 26, 33, and 40 of year one, I talked about authenticity and VLD not being on the DSM and masking NLD. Those are episodes that uh, talk about the invisibility of NLD and visibility of it. Please listen to this on Invisible by Hunter Hayes because it gives you a good um, aspect of um, what it feels like to be invisible. And it gives you a good perspective of it as well. So, like I was saying earlier, I do have support from neurotypicals and from NBLD years of my life, which I really appreciate. And I try to support them as well. So it's twofold. Um, and uh, so... I'm going to list some of the ways NLD is visible or can be visible, and then I'll list some of the ways it's invisible. So NLD can be visible when someone is clumsy. Of course, it depends on the level of clumsiness. When they talk weirdly or act strangely in social situations. NVLD ears can fall a lot, break things, or stumble. We can talk too much and sometimes we forget the context of the story that we're trying to tell someone. And we can also live in core morbidity and not want anything to do with society or anyone else because we simply want it to relax and not have to think about anything. This is one of the invisible parts of NLD, which is NLD and core morbidity, which for me is with migraines and we can also have issues with learning sports and finding ones that are easy for us to do or at least easy in some ways and for me it's been hard to learn how to ski but i don't give up because i enjoy it now and didn't want to give up same thing goes for running We can struggle so much in life without anyone realizing how, why, or when we do. I struggle a lot with math, writing essays, and expressing myself accurately in a conversation with someone. I love, but we definitely can have some things that I would say come more natural to us than to some other individuals because of having MLB. For example, I love running, singing, jump roping, and podcast writing because those things, I feel like they're easier for me to do than they used to be. Um, Sometimes I just wish that when I try something new, it wouldn't be so hard as as it is for me. Like with surfing, um, that's really hard for me to learn, and I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to enjoy it really because it is tricky for me to do because it's a new thing and I have NLD so it's yeah um so since NLD is not on the diagnostic statistical manual of mental disorders or DSM it's hard for someone for some of neurotypicals to think it's a real learning disability or learning challenge or diagnosis trust me It is real. Sorry, didn't mean to yell there. Just put emphasis on that. We're not faking or making up our challenges with visual, spatial, academics, social situations, fine and gross motor skills, or managing a budget. All those challenges are real. And like autism, there's a spectrum of symptoms that you can experience. Some can be experienced those symptoms really severely or not so severely like me. Um, so I mean, like, why would we make it up? It used to be on the DSM, but it was removed because there was 
wasn't a single definition of it that scientists, psychologists, researchers, etc. could agree upon. Recently, in May of this year, the NBLD project submitted a new proposal for NLD to be on the DSM-5, um, I believe. And the name of the disability may change to Developmental Visual Spatial Disorder, or DVSD, for the abbreviation. I hope that if it does change, it becomes clear what NBLD or DVSD is to neurotypicals. I also hope that they think that it is a real diagnosis and sincerely apologize for thinking otherwise if they fall into that category. And with the name changing, I think it might become a little bit clearer what it is because when you say nonverbal learning disability, it's like, huh? But you can talk so well. And yeah, that's true for most people with NLD. But the part, main part that they have challenges with is the nonverbal, like the social cues, body language, comprehending those things, facial expressions, being aware of their tone of voice when they're talking, um, math, uh, writing, um, driving, managing money. Those are just a few of the challenges that people with NLD have. There are others. And... You know, as I wrap up today, I would like for you to think about all the learning disabilities, learning challenges in the world. And for me, I do include things that aren't, that you wouldn't normally think about, like anxiety, OCD, um, you know, maybe you're a neat freak. <laughs> that could be included too, um, which I think is part of OCD. And, um, I do include this, include, sorry, include those things because it's something that you have to deal with or put up with in your life that initially is invisible to others until they get to know you better. And then they realize, oh, that is a challenge for that person and they are coping with it and they are able being able to get through life with it which i think is phenomenal for people who have something that they are um that can make it challenging to live through life like a learning challenge like nlb asd adhd asperger's dysgraphia, dyscalculia, or, um, you know, those are some of the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, and, you know, I thank you again for the ones, for those neurotypicals out there who do want to learn more about the invisible learning challenges in this world. And, who have put in the effort to learn more about them. But like I was saying, try to think about the invisibility and visibility of those learning challenges and be able to see and notice the invisibility more because the more we make the invisibility visible, the better, I think, because then you will be able to realize how much of an impact those learning challenges or tiny things that challenge us every day have in those people's lives. So thank you. And I will talk to you next Friday. And today I am very excited to announce that better help is now sponsoring this podcast. I have had seven years of therapy, so I know it can help change your life if you not only let it, but work on the personal goals that you set with your therapist. Without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is therapy works. 
but what is therapy exactly? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships at work, not dealing well with stress. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you to help. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's more affordable than in-person therapy and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are the greatest asset. And special offering to listeners of Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge. You can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash I'll put in the link in the podcast description for you. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-E-P. Thanks again to BetterHelp for supporting, I mean, sponsoring this podcast. As I wrap up, there are some things I would like to share with you. I do have a website for this podcast. It is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook and Instagram page for this podcast. It is called Living with NLD. I will include the links for those in the description. In conclusion, I would like to hear from my audience. If you know individuals with NLD that I could interview for this podcast, please email me at livingwithnld at gmail.com. What are you interested in learning about NLD? I know I'm not an expert, but I do know I have the living experience of having it. I would like you to practice journaling about your gifts and differences. Also see if there is a way that you can make that difference become easier for you to do than it originally was. Thank you for listening today, and please go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to it. Thank you. Bye.